Welcome back to BAM TV Studios in San Francisco. I'm here with Adam Stevens. We're going to talk for just a few minutes about the new album, The Delay in the Room, and, uh, and the throne that you are sitting on. Is the delay coming from both? Oh, it is. It's both of us have it. Delay, delay, <laughs> delay. Um, OK, so tell us um, a little bit about the new album, We Live on Cliffs. Uh, how did it come about? And, um, and then we'll jump in from there. Uh, OK. Well, it came about from songs I was writing. I kind of, it's what I tend to do, write songs. Can't really help it. So ended up with a lot of songs that I kind of wanted to do something else with. And um, I don't know, kind of grew slowly, got a band together, and you know, decided to finally put it down. Was it strange to? Um, write songs knowing, did you know from the get-go it was going to be with a full band rather than just drums and guitar or? Uh, no, I think at first actually, I, when I first started I wanted it to be like all acoustic initially, but I had the tendency to get loud. Right. So right. after a while, everything just started, I felt like a, more instrumentation was needed and more dynamics were needed. And <clears throat> so, I don't know, I tried, got some friends together and and are you someone that, are you, like the music that you're listening to at the time, do you think like, okay, this is going to be an acoustic album, I'm listening to these things right now, I'm going to kind of try and like model this album after this, or, or you're inspired by a certain type of album while you're writing, or do you try and like close yourself off from that? I mean, I, I wish, I think that would be a good approach to writing a record, you know, if you focused on a certain style but I don't I don't know I don't really have the desire or the ability I guess to do that I think that would be you'd make probably a more cohesive record that way but I kind of tend to be listening to a lot of different things all the time so it's constantly changing and um, the songs on the record to me ended up like all being pretty different not just like not just in their in this in the style of writing but actually in the style of production and the way they turned out and I like that, you know. I mean, a lot of people want a record that start to finish feels like one consistent thing. And right. That's, you know, that has its merits. But for me, I kind of wanted something different, a little bit more, you know, a bit more turns in the way. Yeah. And w was there any fear in taking a more produced approach to a record? Were you worried about losing um, a, s uh, a rawness or a sense of urgency to the album? Or, I mean, was that something that crossed your mind? Um, it didn't at the time, actually, at all. And now? Does it now or no? Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, one thing I wanted to ask you about is I, I, I read a quote that you said, these are songs about desperation. Um, and I just kind of was curious why that 
um, theme appealed to you, or is it just something where like you didn't choose it, it chose you type of thing? Um, I, to me, I mean, I have a particular tendency to write songs that I think are more about that. That's kind of, it's not really my choice. It's kind of just the way it is. Right. And I don't think that, I don't know, I think that most art in any form should be, should have a sense of urgency to it. And urgency is, you know, sort of synonymous with desperation. Like there's a need to, a need to get something out and not like, you know, not art for art's sake, not like getting it out just because it's because you can and it's like a machine, like a factory, but actually having something behind it that is, it's out of necessity and urgency, if, you know. Um, so that, I mean, to me, that's kind of the ideal. That, like, that's what you try to do or that's, you don't try, that's how it should be. And there's a lot of music that is in that way and it still can be extremely entertaining and great and I, it, that as well has its side to it but to me I guess my favorite songs and my favorite art in general is, tends to have that it, like blatant sense of like it was, it was just it couldn't kind of it couldn't be held back you know right and w as you're writing these songs and you're tweaking these songs um, is there a threat of that sense of urgency kind of being diluted if like you go to it too many times, you try and tweak it too many times, or, or no? I don't really think so. Well, I don't. I don't know. I mean, in this situation with the record, yeah. I mean, I, or I guess it can happen with any record these days. There's so many tricks you can pull with production and stuff. That you can really make anything that sounded nothing like the original song right. after at the end. But I, I don't know. I guess I just don't think about it. I think more about. <clears throat> the song itself is kind of, that's sort of where I lay most of my interest in. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I guess you're right along the way, it can get sort of obscured and end up like beneath layers of production and get sort of lost. And that can be definitely a problem with a lot of records. And, yeah. um, I don't know. I mean, I, I haven't listened to the record in a while. So I don't really know if, if I would feel that way if I listened to it now, you know, because I try not to listen to things. Right. Much. I kind of like to let them go. So that's that was kind of my next question. So you, you record it. It's it's mixed. It's mastered. It's done. What is your approach? Do you like? There are st stages of like, I love it. Oh crap! What have we done? You know, like, at what point do you have like rules to like? Um, okay, I'm not going to listen to it for this amount of time. I'm going to come back to it at this point. Mm -hmm. um, or do you just say, you know what? That's done. Moving forward. Um, I don't really think that you, personally, I don't know, I guess I get a little self-conscious if I listen to something too often that I have done and I don't have much control over, you know, like changing, you know. You listen to it while you're in the process of making it, but then at the same time while you're making it, you shouldn't listen to it too many times either because you can overanalyze something to the point where it gets totally detached from how it was, you know, or, or you're, you're not the same person you were when you first started writing it. And if you start overanalyzing it and pushing it from another mindset, it becomes something else that it wasn't. And that can be good, but usually it ends up losing some of its initial value. Right. So I don't, I don't know. I don't really like to, I, and I also like concerning something that's already done behind me, I'd rather just work on something new right. and pay much attention to something I don't have any choice over. It's sort of a waste of time. Right. And so, this idea that you're not the same person you were, you know, or someone's not the same person they were when they, you know, recorded or wrote these songs. Um, looking back, I guess, now, <laughs> which you don't want to do, but uh, what do you think you learned about songwriting through the production of this record? I don't think I really learned very much about songwriting. Anything just in the, the ideas? I mean, I learned a lot about production. Okay. Sure. A lot about how to make a record and how to make one sound good, but I don't think much about songwriting. And, and what about, did certain ideas that you were writing about, were there things that were revealed to you through uh, writing the lyrics to these songs or these? Um. I mean, I, yeah, no, no. 
Fair I, enough. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess this kind of comes back to what you started with about like desperation. What I was sort of, I think, what I was saying when I said that was that, like, that is like a consistent theme, you know, and and like it's sort of it, it's a, it's a theme that gets sort of repeated and the feeling. I guess if I've learned anything, it's more that like the feeling is what you want to retain and maintain, and the actual. The, have that being like the theme in every song is what you kind of want to lose and like not have it be like, you know when you see those bands who like are like all fist in the air and anthemic and they're like every, every single word I'm saying like will change your life. That to me gets a little bit obnoxious after a while because it's not about the presentation of the song, it's about the song itself, you know? It's not about like bathing something in gold and like making the world think that it's something really valuable. It's about the actual, it having integral value in itself, you know? So right. I guess if anything I've learned about songwriting, that's probably what I've learned just through, I guess through listening to the songs over and over again and like having to overanalyze something, you get to the point where you're like, I would have changed that, maybe I would have changed that, maybe that's like a little bit too like forceful, you know? Right. So I guess simplicity is what I've heard where I'm trying to go. Yeah, like just let that moment just stand for itself. It doesn't need to, to be an analogy of something bigger or metaphor or something. Just this is it. Appreciate this. Yeah. yeah. Well, I said we were going to keep this brief, so we're going to keep it brief. Um, thank you very much for coming by. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming by the studio. Um, and once again, let's hear it for Adam Hayworth Stevens. Thank you. Thanks.